Okie dokie. So here we go. This is going to be my introduction to the jewellery that I'm going to make with you on YouTube this year, next year, 23. So rings. These are made of resin. I use clear epoxy resin and I make, I set the ring base in it, create a sort of tabletop which I paint and gild and then cover with resin again. And then you can do them in all sorts of colours. This is a very small selection, but I use iridescent acrylic inks and silver and gold leaf and artificial silver and gold copper, variegated metal leaf, bits of chalk deposits, all sorts of things to give a kind of visual shift in the colour and, and a sense of mystery and not quite certain what's there and relief and dark shadows and all sorts of things playing around with it. So that will be rings. Now we have stud earrings, which are similar method, but smaller, obviously. And I use surgical steel, or rather I advise surgical steel for the posts because it's far less expensive than silver. And silver has become quite difficult to get silver that doesn't cause irritation. I became very allergic to silver, so I just wear these now. And I do actually sell them, or try to sell them, on Etsy. I find Etsy quite time consuming and hardly ever get anything up there, so I tend to sell more to galleries. Um, but I will try and put some on Etsy because I know people love them. And I also do papier-mâché. Now, when I do papier-mâché, I paint on four millimetre thick card and many, many layers. I, it's also my reason for going travelling. It can be in the UK, it can be away, away. Um, it tends to be around the Mediterranean or in the European cities. And I'm just looking for, well, I don't know when I'm actually going what I'm looking for. I might look for some kind of broken paintwork on the edge of a, a poster. And I might look to see what the name of the street is. And if it's in Paris or in France, anywhere really, they're named after people who I've probably not heard of. But when I Google, I dive into a whole sort of strata of history, which I haven't encountered previously. And that just widens my knowledge, my interests. So these are made of um, many layers. I tend to do maybe 30 different layers. Obviously you don't layer all over, it's here, there and everywhere. And I create aspects. Sometimes I do double-sided, which is quite nice. But mainly I do single-sided. Actually, double-sided is quicker to do. But I have to be careful of my time because once I bring out a new range, basically I need to clone myself again because there's not enough of me really to do everything. And then I also make pendants and brooches. These are brooches. And these are like little fragments of paintings from wherever I've been. For example, this one, I love Capri. I get, well, Capri if you're in Italy, but Capri from England. And this one is, I was getting up early one morning, walking to get a coffee along Via Camarel and set into the little stones where um, a cast iron water thingy that you know you, the workmen have to go into and above it was a jacaranda tree with all these beautiful sort of pinky mauvey blossoms falling down and I took a photograph to remind me that when I get back home I want to work up a painting all about that experience and then I send these paintings off to get laser cut into little tiny pieces and then I make them into jewellery. That's how that all evolved. And there's a wonderful story that goes with that, which I'll tell you another time. Also, I go mudlarking when I'm in London and I pick up, I pick up clay pipes and I make them into necklaces sometimes. I collect bits of broken pottery. This is part of a Delft dish, so you can actually see it would have been a beautiful large serving dish. It's very faded now, but it would have been that Delft blue originally. And I've got enough there just to allow me to recreate the whole thing in papier-mâché. When I've had a morning's 
kind of mooching on the Thames, um, I go to the Museum of London and check out my little shards or whatever I found against the pieces there. And you can often see a whole piece and you can find out the history of the family that made it. And believe you me, they have very interesting histories. It's the whole political of history of Europe is basically to be found in bits and pieces on the foreshore of the River Thames in London. So the very small ones I kind of make up into more delicate. This is like a sort of sea necklace, a creature. I've made hundreds of these. This is a very old one, but I've held on to it because I'm so fond of it. These little beads are made, I call them iridescent papier-mâché. I don't know if you can see. There are the iridescent ones. They're very lightweight. I make them with Tyvek which I heat shrink on a wooden kebab stick with a heat gun and then I wrap around it this tissue film which looks like an iridescence. It's beautiful, like, well, like ice really, like ice on granite early in the morning on Dartmoor, it catches the sunlight, it's that kind of thing. And it's magical. And then these can be dipped into resin and they will just resemble Baroque pearls. And I make these kind of very lightweight, big Baroque pearl necklaces. I also, this one is of a bottle brush tree. Oh no, it's a magnolia seed head, which I have wrapped and wrapped around a wooden stick and then dried it. In fact, that might be porcelain, but I think it's papier-mâché. Because what I do is I dry them out and then I soak them in um, PVA glue and then dry that out. So they become really quite hard. And they make beautiful little things. You can make quite roundy ones, a little like the Pandora things, beads. And I also collect any old shells that I find about, because I mean, isn't that beautiful? The inspiration there for a necklace or something is just astonishing. And of course, once you've made all these papier-mâché trays, you've got somewhere to store your, initially your ideas, the fir cones and the things to make moulds from. And I do actually have a little piece of this because that's a, just a daisy I picked up one morning on the way to the studio and uh, pressed it into something called silly gum, which is an epoxy moulding paste. And then I have this impression made. Then I put in, this is paper, paper that's been whizzed up in a blender with some uh, PVA glue and water and chalk and you make it into a sort of cold paste clay thing. And then you press it in and you end up with all of these beautiful images. I've been doing this for, oh, God knows how long now, 35 to 40 years. I have got so many things that I've made and so many ideas. And it's a bit like, you know, a snowball getting bigger and bigger. I just get more and more interested and more inspired and more excited and look forward every day. And I want to share that feeling of looking forward to having time to yourself or sit at the kitchen table and share it with your children or your grandchildren or your friends. Put the radio on, make things, listen to music, drink a cup of tea, walk the dog, get some ideas, enjoy our own time, step back from the mad rush of everyday life and find this incredible peace and quiet that lives within this world of creating and making. And don't be branded and just be yourself. Be true to whoever you are. Find out whoever you are. I'm still finding out. But I have to say, I do like myself. and I do enjoy my own company. So I kind of think I must be on the right path. Not everybody's a cup of tea, mind you. So, toodaloo, see you soon.